Welcome to Immortal Works Flash Fiction Friday, Episode 72, Finding Eden, by Arthur Mitchell, narrated by John Grundvig. I stood at the entrance to Holmes' fortress, sharing an often brutal world with another hungry species, his family's colony resourceful, and one of the most rapacious on the planet. To thrive in temperate zones, his urgency... Among the other dangerous critters, and with few equals, his footprint loomed large, and all creatures learned to be wary. Inhabiting vast tracts of many temperate ecosystems, they occupy the place at the top of the food chain. But now one enemy, water, which they learned to control and protect against for millennia, now again threatened. Home, a fairly recent chambered redoubt since the devastating but victorious last war. Until, as of late, this new awareness ran like a current through the compound. Hi, part of a very special inner circle to protect both food stores and entrances. He'd been warned of the approaching menace. However, now his duty strictly to his queen and for her protection. It had been like this for as long as he remembered, and he would defend her at all cost, including his life. They felt the effects of climate change long before the brightest of men warned. Now the signal arrived to evacuate, and before suffering death and destruction, they marched en masse toward their crafts to flee those wasted tracts. Pushed by the wind that carried them across the dreaded deeps at the mercy of the roiling waters, from the farthest shore they sailed, as ancestors before, clutching their flimsy crafts beneath the swirling sky. As fate decreed, bound together against the odds, the instinct to survive driving them. Every movement, a search to find a place to land and save their starving bodies. Many would be lost on the journey, but the vast majority of the colony, along with the queen, was saved. Finally, the winds abated. The sun came through darkened skies. Weary bodies filed off to make their way through the landscape, much like the one that they had fled and settled and had known as home for many generations. A world abundant with towering trees and sweet fruit, and they hunted for immediate stores. They cultivated rich gardens and captured many species of native animals. Farming and husbandry demanded breeding many for future use as edibles during long periods of cold. Protected in sheltered redoubts, they lived in comfort and grew by numbers. After generations of adapting and surviving within their environment, it began to change and was not as giving, and so... They simply moved on to more fertile fields existing across their world. Eventually, however, in spite of great cities built and thriving communities, centers and crossroads, their world began shrinking and life in every direction not as generous. They were unprepared. With all their stripped land dead and dying from long droughts, wars, and conflagrations of fire swept over their homes and laid waste to years of development. Then came the floods and with their natural world devastated time and again, had little to buffer the fury of the inundations across the barren, water-clogged landscape. Now their great ark saved many thousands, delivering them to a new paradise. So there began the process of discovery and the taking of the bounty before them within the long struggle to reorganize. What High and the first colonies had slowly built by the virtues of adaptation and sustainability, and especially the wonderful diversity began to erode long after High's time, began to break down, as their demands grew disproportionate to their numbers. Although occasional leaders among them began to resist the continued stripping away everything before it, the links to the past instilled and hard to break. The endless expansion of the prime and accessible land's gifts continued unabated. Colonies grew and expanded, the desire for prime turf insatiable. For a long, productive period, new leaders began to change the course of civilization, introducing new methods of cultivation, harvesting, husbandry. Although any move or attempt at conservation met with overwhelming resistance, a caste system came to dominate the order. Certain members of the now thriving cities were granted access to this caste to receive fruits of workers' labor. This alliance grew powerful, and workers paid fealty for access to basic needs. No matter that creating colonies in floodplains over the decades repeatedly devastated communities, the dominant caste, now fully entrenched, 
diversity non-operable. Inevitably, with crops ravaged and food stores contaminated, sickness and ill health followed and revolts among the workers grew in intensity, only to be put down by armies the caste had recruited. In time, assassinations followed by ever larger rioting, and with the release of vast chemical stores by adversarial parties, it was the beginning of the end for the once mighty civilization which slowly crumbled from the inside. When toxic red clouds cover the sun, and all members of the society disoriented, neither productive or constructive. However, bands of worker warriors who had foreseen the calamity and had escaped deep underground until it slowly cleared, they came to light and took sides. After many deaths and a weakening force, that cooperation deemed the only solution to turn aside the catastrophic methods, and slowly, with the foresight of new leaders began to rebuild with renewed dedication to a formula of moderation and equality living within their means. And again, in a world made green and fruitful, in harmony, equality, fraternity, and peace, conservation became the word as the guide into a new and hopeful future. Another species, however, took note that with each rise of water, more and more creatures migrated elsewhere. Many predicted, in spite of these enormous losses, it was a precursor for a greater tragedy. For even man's intelligence could adapt as he had for millennia, yet no matter where they found refuge, couldn't outlive the ants. Thanks for listening. If you have a submission, please send it to immortal-works.com.